Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. So we made it through the weekend. Uh, of course, Monday is here and there's a lot of things to go over. So let's just jump right in. First of all, uh, the market is the market. And uh, we see a little bit of a tumultuous effect. And uh, over the last 24 hours, we're down a little bit. And uh, that's just par for the course, especially after, you know, having. And uh, we're around 2.4 trillion market cap. I expect us to go a little bit lower uh, before we start to uh, make some gains. But that's just what's going on in the market. But this is the big story of today. What everybody's talking about on X, it used to be called Twitter and everything else out there in spaces, is that there's a new court filing. It looks like uh, the SEC, Gary Gensler, believed that Ethereum was a security for at least a year. And the things that they are talking about really puts it into the crosshairs of them being the ones that oversees Ethereum as opposed to the CFTC and given to those guys for a commodity, which we all knew was going to happen, I think. And Gary just cannot let this go. He believes it is security. And hey, I'm not here to debate anybody. I'm just saying this is what we want, a little bit of clarity moving forward. And this is where it all comes down to this piece. So. This is a revelation that comes following the uh, filing of an unredacted complaint against the agency by uh, consensus, which, of course, the SEC put out a Wells notice saying we're going to sue you, consensus. We know you're a part of the Ethereum Foundation. We believe you're dabbling in unregistered securities. Consensus said, oh, yeah, well, we're going to sue you because you say that Ethereum is security. We don't believe that it actually is. So sure. Uh, and now, of course, it comes full circle where it looks like this wasn't anything that's uh, unnew and looks like they've actually said that this has actually been going on for quite some time. So the company filed a redacted version of the lawsuit in a Texas federal court last Thursday in response to a so-called Wells notice. New documents filed Monday, that would be right now, have yet to be totally reported, but they do provide insight into the timeline beyond the SEC's thinking regarding Ethereum's alleged status as a security. And it really just comes down to this. The filing of this documentation states that Ethereum, or this Ethereum 2.0 investigation, as it was called, was based on the SEC's belief that possible offers and sales of certain securities, including but not limited to ETH, had occurred since at least 2018. Now remember, Ethereum wasn't always proof of stake. Before that, before Ethereum 2.0, it was proof of work. And I think that's one of the things that actually saved it from being called a security. And that's why Hinneman, or excuse me, Jay Clayton labeled it as not a security. So unfortunately, as things move forward, as far as proof of stake, here we are. So if the Gensler SEC finds Ethereum to be a security, it would contradict SEC guidance under Chairman Jay Clayton in June of that year. Then Director of Corporate Finance, Bill Hinneman, ah, there we go, stated in a speech the SEC's position that Ethereum alongside Bitcoin was not a security. But again, that was a long time ago, and things certainly have changed. And yes, it is uh, proof of stake. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not here to say, well, this is security because of this, or this is not a security. But it doesn't matter what I think. That doesn't really matter what it really any of us think. What it really comes down to is where is this going to go? And who's going to back consensus who's going to back ethereum and who's going to go to bat for ethereum moving forward i think that this is at first when i took a look at something like this is great because now we can get uh, clarity and we can say okay now it's security now we know that all the exchanges have to go in and then register it fine whatever doesn't matter i bought securities just last week they're called stocks and there is no problem with it it's just being actual labeled for what it is the problem and this is going to be a big problem, is because even if they label it as security, let's just say they win. Let's just say that for some reason, Gary stops losing like crazy, and they actually pull out a win somehow. And they say, yeah, it is a security. And this is why. Bah, 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 bah. Between that happening and Congress actually doing something about it and actually putting together what they're supposed to do, which is write the bills which will give guidance to the SEC and say, no, you're incorrect. In between that time, it's going to really suck because the SEC has an amazing ability to stonewall everybody who comes in to try to do the right things. We've seen reports of Kraken doing it. We've seen reports of Coinbase doing it. We've seen reports of Binance actually doing it and going to the SEC and going, look, what do you want from us? We don't care what it is. Just give us some guidance. Like, sure, we'll give you some guidance. Come and talk to us. And they come and talk to them and they sue them. 
So if this works out and does come through, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem because then all the different exchanges that are out there are selling unregistered securities. How do they go in there and fight that? Sure, come in and talk to us. Oh, we're going to sue you for doing that. We'll give you some guidance later, which puts us on the hilt. And the last thing I will say is this, is that if that happens, it's good for the global economy. Because what it's going to do is it's going to allow everybody to pick up just like they've been doing and say, goodbye, America. We had a great run. Now we're going to go to some other countries and we're going to set up exchanges across the way and it'll just be a demand someplace else. And uh, unfortunately, that's where America is going. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. I think this is uh, could be potentially be a big problem because it's not like Gary's going to do anything. But we'll see what we talk about in the Q and A. Also, um, inflows and outflows. I found this interesting because this will piggyback on the last thing we just talked about as far as Ethereum. This is from Crypto Slate, and take a look at coin shares. So we take a look at inflows and outflows. Uh, as far as uh, different digital assets. This is these are investments, products related to digital assets like, you know, Solana XRP Cardano. And what do you notice here? You notice something which is as far as like the outflows or year to date flows, I should say. Uh, the ones in red, Ethereum, negative 38. This is in millions. That's in the week. Month to date, 123 and year to date is negative 50. Everything else is positive. So maybe somebody knew something. You can see that Solana year to date is at 10 million. Binance is at three. Litecoin, 21 million. That's crazy. Shorting Bitcoin. All right. I can see how the bears want to win. XRP, 13 ever winning. Cardano, seven. Eh, great. Polkadot and some other different digital assets, 107. So if we can take a look at that, we're like, okay, that makes sense. Somebody knew or somebody thought this was actually going to happen. And I'll be darned if it didn't. But then if we take a look at that, Let's take a look at Bitcoin, because this is also flows by provider as far as the ETFs. And if we take a look here, Grayscale is negative 17. This is billions. Well, this is a million, so negative 17,000 is 17 billion. iShares or ETFs, BlackRock, 15 million, Fidelity, 8, and down the line. So we can just see that there's actually a net positive, which looks pretty good. So if I got to tell you, now that I think about this, if we have such a problem with Gary labeling as a security and then pretty much st stymieing the exchanges here in America. What do you think is going to happen to Bitcoin? It's like Ben might be totally correct on the Bitcoin dominance, but we'll see. But as a reminder, as far as like net Bitcoin ETF flows, we're still looking pretty strong in that regard. This is from uh, heyapollo.com. Great website. Check it out. All the information is free. As far as like total net Bitcoin flows, the ETF, this is 214,000. These are in Bitcoins. So net Bitcoin flows, even though we talk about grayscale dumping a ton, we still got a 214,000 going into these ETFs. So things are looking good as far as the ETFs and Bitcoin, which is why I got to tell you, when people talk about Bitcoin, they're like, you know, it's there's so much more gains on the other on altcoins. I still think they can rebound. But in the short term, watch out. So yeah, let me just think about that in the comments. Then to finish up, there was a a piece that I, I found on uh, on Stripe and Avalanche. And we had just talked about this as Stripe came out. Stripe, of course, major, massive global payment processor. They're the ones that I use from my websites. They're the ones that, you know, small e-commerce stores like Amazon and Walmart, those guys are integrated with, with Stripe. Anything that you do with your Visa and MasterCard on an e-commerce site, it's pretty much Stripe. See the Stripe or PayPal, those are the rails. And they, of course, came out and said, hey, if you want to use USDC, we'll do it globally. That's cool. You can use Ethereum Rails or Solana Rails. And then someone had told me that, no, 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 they're also using Polygon. I didn't see that in the announcement. However, if when I went to the Stripe support and did a search, it is true. To start earning in crypto, you'll need to provide the public address of a crypto wallet that supports the Polygon network here. So it looks like in this, in this way, and they're talking about USDC as well, Polygon is supported. So it looks like it's Polygon, uh, which is essentially a side chain uh, for Ethereum and then Solana. But then this just came out. Congratulations to Avalanche. Looks like they're integrating Stripe. Again, being a global, pay global payment processor and actually onboarding Web 2 to Web 3. This was a, uh, a post 
on X. Stripe's expansion to crypto continues, integrating Avalanche and Core to provide easier access to Web3. Now, I have to stress that this is, has nothing to do with, with stable coins and USDC on, on Avalanche. That's not what this is. What they're actually doing is US users, US users, this isn't even global, can purchase ABAX or Avalanche directly through Stripe without using an exchange. Well, that's great because guess what? That'd be great to get away from these centralized exchanges because it looks like Gary's got this boot on their throat. Avalanche apps can embed Stripe's on-ramp via customizable widgets. And when I took a look at this, what they're essentially allowing to do is just, well, there's the Stripe, the actual payment rails, and uh, using integration with Core. Core is Avalanche's native ecosystem wallet, and it looks something like this. There's a uh, link in the description. Actually, no, I didn't put a link in the description. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me put that in. And then I also want to put this in here, which I forgot to do. Sorry. And I'll tell you why in a second. So you're going to be able to use Core Labs, which is their wallet, which is for Chrome or on your mobile device, whatever that may be. That's the official link. So you don't go to the wrong place. I hate people getting scammed out. I want to make sure that you guys are protected. So for here, Stripe aims to address the cold start problem faced by Web3 companies, which occurs when customers don't have enough funds in their wallets to carry out transactions. Stripe handles, and this is the big thing, Stripe is going to handle all the KYC, payments, fraud, and compliance, and AML, which is essentially what they're trying to bust down CZ Binance for. So they're going to be involved with that, and they're going to actually be able to buy Avalanche. Makes you want to look at Avalanche pretty hard, huh? Yeah, I know. Me too. So if we, Avalanche is one of those, first of all, I, I'm very biased. I own Avalanche. I, I believe in it. looks like it's a pretty good chain and then subnets and things like that. But on top of that, I want you guys to check this out because Avalanche is just not the token. They actually do stuff. Several leading Avalanche ecosystem partners have already indicated they will be integrating with Stripe. And that would be GoGoPool, which is a staking protocol. Avi, which is a centralized, a decentralized naming service. You know, there's a ton of those different naming services where you can pick those up. Pact, which is a enterprise and entrepreneurs to spin up blockchain power platforms in just 10 minutes via their WordPress for Web3 site. Sweet. So which, which is pretty great. You can actually spin up your own subnet just by using Pact on Avalanche on your own business, which I think is pretty great. I got to check that out, actually. And then Zeroon, cultural diversity, discovery and distribution platform. Uh, Halliday, which is another uh, Web3 uh, wallet. The Arena is, is a social FI platform and Shrapnel and DeFi Kingdom, which are both Web3 games. It's a little bit different. I think Shrapnel is a, a third person shooter and DeFi Kingdom is, a, is an RPG game. So again, they're all gonna integrate with Stripe. Don't have to go through a centralized exchange. You're gonna be able to you know, purchase Avalanche using Stripe and hopefully they don't have the God awful gouging prices that MoonPay does. I'll let you know how that works out. So it looks pretty good. And then also, I just wanted to throw this out there. I was uh, talking to the guys over at Rumble Kong League. I know this doesn't make any sense to you, but wait, we just wait for a second. So like, I like games. I like games on my phone, especially when I'm trying to kill time. But I don't like like the big, huge, like shrapnel third person shooter where I got to do all this stuff. But this is, if you ever remember uh, NBA Jam back in the day, like this is the game that is going to be on Apple and Android. It's like NBA Jam. And what's great about it is that it's, first of all, it runs on Avalanche. Second of all, it's a Web 2 game first, so you don't even have to do anything with Web 3. And fourth, I should say, is that they've got some pretty big partnerships with uh, Gatorade and Under Armour, as well as the NBA. So that's coming out later, but I just thought it was interesting. I mean, as far as like gamings go, and uh, I'll probably talk about that in a deep dive later. But that's what we have for that. Let me just think about that in the comments. And lastly, lastly, I just want to remind everybody that the crypto that we get into and, and we invest into, you know, we believe into it, right? We really want it to work. But we have to remember always that it's a business. And if you screw up in business, that's just how it is. Yuga Labs lost its way. And Yuga Labs, if you're not familiar, they're the ones for the Board API Club. 
And uh, he says, yeah, we have to, we lost our way and now we have to do layoffs. They made a lot of money. I'm gonna show you how much. So this was Yuga Labs co-founder, Greg Solano stated, hey, I, I owe everyone a frank and honest explanation of what led to the decision. To put it simply, Yuga lost its way. Getting yourself centered and on the right path means being a smaller, more agile and crypto native team, a team that does fewer things, but does them brilliantly. I have to applaud that decision because if you screw up in the beginning, it happens, uh, you're going to have to make some very difficult decisions. I've had to fire people myself and uh, no one wants to do it. And I'm glad they're going in the right direction. But as a reminder, how big Board Ape Yacht Club was as far as an NFT, I went to uh, Crypto Slam. And here's the NFTs as far as the top sales of all time. And it's all Board Ape Yacht Clubs. This picture this jpeg cost somebody 2.9 million dollars this one cost them 2.7 this one cost them 2.6 you know how much they cost now around 60 60 000, 50 000, 40 000. so just remember that what may seem hot right now may not be the best thing to invest into try to find the ones that uh, you are more interested in and you believe in the project as opposed to the next or the current hottest thing. And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, turn to subscribe and everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, if you wanna stick around, we'll do a little Q and A, answer all your questions. And as I see, there's a bunch of them and we'll go from there. If you gotta take off, take off. I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much.